Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs and the sponsored video series from GarageKits.us. In this uh, video, what we're going to do is we're going to focus mostly on doing a magnet system onto the Haruka Fire Elemental Kit and also a pegging system. Sort of like what you would see on a pre-painted uh, statue from like, you know, comic book companies. Uh, some people, what they do is they like to make their items where they just drill holes in it, they paint everything and then glue it together in one solid piece. I like to make everything magnetized and uh, removable from the base so this way life is easier for me for painting, moving, uh, if I ever have to take the kit and sell off some of my collection, I could pack it easier. So I like to take the extra steps and go through it. So we're going to kind of go over that right now. And then what we'll do is we'll start working on the kit. Uh, I still got a lot more prep work to do on the figure, but for right now, we're looking pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up where a, a rod system will go on the bottom of the figure into the base. Uh, and then what we'll do is after that's set up and ready to go, we're going to set up both arms to be magnetized. I'm going to glue the hands to the arms, but we're going to make the arms magnetized. So all they will do is they'll just click in with magnets and make life easier for that. So uh, a lot of the stuff I collect over time is metal rods and brass rods. I don't like to use a lot of steel in my stuff only because if I use magnets, uh, the steel will attract to the magnets and I'd rather just use brass. So, you know, if you get like brass wire hangers, that's good. I go to like hobby stores and I get all these like different sizes of brass rods because sometimes stuff is pretty thin and you can't use a thick rod and sometimes stuff is pretty thick and you might want to use like a nail or some other type of stuff. So you can see I have flat stuff here uh, for uh, whatever I need to do. I have uh, zinc uh, square stuff, solid zinc square stuff we'll be using for the bottom of the figure. Uh, I also have hollow brass uh, square rods too that I use for a lot of my other stuff. So it all depends on what you, uh, you know, collect, what you can find at hobby stores and what you want to do. Then I also have a couple buckets here of magnets. We have some really thick magnets that are uh, heavy. Um, I don't use uh, these magnets anymore that come in these containers. Basically what I just do is I go on eBay and I order magnets off them. You got to order the N52 magnets. Uh, if you order anything like the N40s or lower, what it is is they're not as strong. The N52s are the strongest. The N50s are just the second strongest, but N52s are perfect for these kits because they'll attach very well, they last, and they won't be as hard to grab. I think there are stronger ones, but you want to stay with the 52s. You can see in these bags here, I have all these other little size magnets because sometimes stuff's bigger, smaller, and then uh, we'll have to go through there what we're going to use. But this is kind of what I have set up for magnet-wise. Now, uh, as far as setting up the base with the figure, there is a square metal rods, uh, which is called key stock, as you can see here. Hopefully that's kind of going in pretty well. I'll, probably, I'll write it down in the description of all this stuff. So key stock is basically... Stuff you can get at a hardware store for like your uh, doors and your locks on your house uh, to your bathrooms. The little rods that are inside those uh, knobs, uh, your door handles, is called key stock. And what people do is uh, whenever that stuff goes bad or they need to put a new one in or something, they could go and get a piece like this, cut off a new one and put it in. So uh, this one right here is uh, 3 16 by 12 inches and this is kind of like the common size I use. And this is zinc. Now zinc doesn't magnetize the magnets as you can see it's not magnetizing or anything like that. So zinc is good for something that you want to put into the base and not worry about magnetizing stuff. But they do make the key stock in uh, steel and they do have a lot of different sizes in it. So you can get stuff that's pretty thick. You can get uh, pieces that are pretty thin. So as you can see, you get all different sizes. And basically, if you get the right size uh, zinc uh, square or uh, steel you can find a good hollow piece that will go into it so this is KNS 8154 as you can see here hopefully it's kind of going in like I said I'll put that in the description and what you do is if you cut out a piece here and you put this into the base and then you have this hollow piece into the base this kind of just slides right into it and then you have a key system uh, they do have uh, bigger pieces of these but I haven't really found anything for these big humongous pieces yet or I really haven't come across them but they're out there so it all depends on if you want to just put a metal rod in the base and then put some like A's into the bottom of it and not have a rod but the reason why I put a rod with this in there is because if you pull this in and out of the base and you just have some putty in there this is going to keep scraping your putty and then your figure is going to wobble 
So you want to have something that's in there. It's not going to scrape up and wobble and it's going to be sturdy. So this zinc keystock and this piece of KNS hollow brass rod is what we're going to use on the bottom of this figure. When we're getting ready to do the arms, what we'll do is we'll create a magnet system using uh, a steel pieces and a hollow brass rod in the arms. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You can actually set it up with just a piece of magnet here and then a piece of magnet in the arm and then you can attach it that way. But I like to have it so this way it slides in with the brass rod like the bottom here and it connects in. But we'll go over that later. Right now we're going to focus on getting this uh, piece on the bottom of the kit, getting her set up on the base and secured, and then we go from there. So that's just some stuff that to get you started on this uh, thing. Like I said, if you don't want to go this route and you just want to attach everything, you definitely want to invest in some brass rods, uh, nails, uh, anything that's like a peg because it's going to make your kit more secure and more sturdy putting it together at the end than actually just gluing it. Because if you just throw some dabs of glue and you put the arm in, uh, over time the glue could get warped or you could snap it or you can hit it and it might break off. So you might want to think about going a little extra step with your kits. Uh, but every kit's different. Every uh, build up's different. Uh, you know, sometimes it's not smart to throw a magnet in there and it's better to glue the piece in. Other times it's great to actually magnetize as much as you can, so it all depends. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to go into the garage. I'm going to get set up with this uh, key system here. We're going to basically get a uh, piece of the uh, key stock. We're going to drum it into a hole at the bottom back underneath here. And then we're going to set it up. So I think what we'll do is we'll probably... Um, I'm not sure if we're going to do it right where this piece is or over here. i got to kind of like decide on how that's going to work out. i got to put it into the base and see. And then I think, because I'm afraid if I dremel a hole up here, I might dremel through the leg. I'd rather dremel like in here to where it's thickness and get the key stock like up about that far into the base of the figure. And it'll be a nice and sturdy. I don't, I'm not worried about chopping off this key because it doesn't matter. Once we clean it up and we get it removable, this key little piece here doesn't matter so you can knock that out you don't always have to follow what the kit gives you you can do whatever you want the idea is have fun with it do what you want and if it looks good at the end and you're happy with it and you're you, that's the way you want it that's all that counts so you don't always have to do what's there you can always have fun and do your own thing so we're going to get set up in the garage we're going to drum out this piece we'll get that set up we're going to get her into the base and then from there we'll start working out the magnets on the arms and then after that, we'll attach the head and then we'll get everything prepped up and cleaned up. And then hopefully the next step is we'll probably start almost paint work once we fine tune some things here and there. Okay, so uh, we're going to pretty much start setting up this figure on the base. Now, uh, pretty much we have everything ready to go. It's fairly straightforward. So make sure you have your safety goggles first. That's an important thing. You don't want to lose an eye when doing this stuff. This right here is your basic uh, hand saw. This is for uh, cutting metal. You get these at, you know, uh, hardware type stores. I use this all the time for sewing up these pieces. Uh, marker, make sure you have your key stock that's uh, workable for piece. You have your figure to design everything. And then uh, right here, this is my Dremel tool. Now, this is a tile cutting bit. You can kind of see how it is. It's so when you buy a brand new one, it's very, very teethy and it will grab. So if you Dremel into like resin and you have a soft hand, this will grab the resin and pull it right across and you might actually chop up an item you don't want to chop. But after you use it over time, it wears down and it's a perfect item for cutting resin. So this is something that if you're worried about using and you don't want to destroy your item and you'd rather just use a drill, you can just get yourself a drill and you can drill into an area, which is fine. Uh, but personally, I like to use my uh, Dremel tool with this bit. I go through these bits a lot because I do a lot of work. But like I said, just make sure if you buy a brand new one and you're worried about it, what you could do is you could get yourself a piece of metal. Like say you just have like a piece of metal, you could sort of just kind of like grind it out a little bit so it's not as teethy, but as long as it's got some kind of teeth on it, it will grab and chop up your resin. But we'll show you that in a second. Uh, another thing you need is if you have it, uh, have yourself a wheel tool, like this wheel tool here right now. What we're gonna do is, when you have a fresh tool like this uh, key stock, or if you cut it, it's all grinded up at the top up there. It's all kind of messy. And it just, what will happen is if you try to put it into here, it's going to sort of like grab. It's not going to go in. So what we're going to do is we're going to kick this on right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of like saw off the tip of this and just make it like smoother to go in. So just kick this on. 
have a piece here. So that's all straight now. And then what I do is this. I'll just go around the edge. So now, there you go, once that kind of turns down. So now that it's flat, it's also kind of smooth around the edging. So now, when you go to put this piece in, it slides in no problem, see? So it's not grabbing. So that works out pretty well. So the next step is, what we want to do is we want to design this onto the base. So, take your figure. So the figure goes on like so, right? And it clicks into that little hole. But it's a little bit messy and that little hole sort of works out. But we don't really need this hole and this piece here. What we want to do is we want to have the key around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to Dremel probably here. Right over around here or so. So we'll just look at your piece, turn it around. So if we Dremel straight up there, we're not going to actually do anything. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll probably leave this key alone. So what's going to happen is we're going to have a two key system basically. So that'll go connect there and then this other piece will connect over here and it's going to stay in pretty well. Next step is what you want to do is how far this piece is going to go in. So we don't need to go all the way up, right? We don't need to go all the way up there. We just need to go like there or so. So you figure about there is fine. So that's as far as we're going to go with it. So we need to have a little bit further down. So we'll mark like right about there for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to saw this piece off. And let's get set up and do that. All right, so next step is what we're going to do is we're going to drum off the hole here at the bottom of the space. So what I did is I set up my vacuum a piece over here and I'm going to drum all in so this way all the resin dust goes into the vacuum. You need a steady hand to do this. If you could come up with a better system or if you want to do it a different way, that's more than you're more than welcome. Uh, if you have one of these vice grip pieces like this, you can vice grip the hose onto a table if you need more security. But I'm kind of used to the point now where I can actually do this with just a Dremel tool and get it worked out. So I'm going to kick this on. I'm going to get this hole pretty much set up. While I start dremeling it out, I'm going to make sure that this piece goes in there fairly well. We don't need to go in too deep, but we don't need them. We want to make sure it goes in. Now I did notch this piece out a little bit here and there when I kind of did my uh, sawing. Only because this way when we put it in with the aves and stuff, this way it kind of catches a little bit better. So it's just a little extra steps here and there. Alright, so as you saw, pretty much I used my Dremel tool to get the basic uh, in there and then what I did is I used my uh, drill and I just kind of went around. So the idea is we don't want this piece to go in perfectly, for, we want to have it nice and loose because it's easier to line it up when it goes in and out of the base. Because if you put this on an angle and then you try to get this in with that key, what it does is they hit each other. You want to make sure this is kind of lined up where both are working at the same time. If for some odd reason I feel that this key is giving me too much an issue, I'll knock it out. But I think I can line everything up where these two keys go in perfectly fine and this will get locked into place just well. So the next step is we're going to go into the house again and what we're going to do is we're going to set this up with a, a use a resin a epoxy and get this situated in there. Uh, but before we do that, what we need to do is take the base and this is going to cause a little bit of an issue but it'll make a life easier once we're all done is when this goes in here like so we sort of want to get where the uh, hole is going to be so as you can see all that stuff came out so that gives me an idea that the holes right there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jumble into this part right now but since this is hollow it's going to make life a little bit harder to get a, a peg in there, but we'll, you'll see how that'll work out later. So let me kind of drill them with that hole right now, and then we can start getting this attached. Okay, so uh, as you saw, I jumbled out the hole first, and I realized it was pretty thin hollowness. And then uh, the other thing is, I was like, you know what? How am I going to get this really secured? Because this is sort of like... If you press too hard or something happens, you can actually break through this because it's sort of not that thin, but it's a little bit thin in some areas, so I'd rather make it a little bit more secured. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the house now. I'm going to mix up some Aves. Uh, we'll talk about Aves and I'll get this set up in there. And then after that, once this base is dried up, since I did some of the wet sanding today, uh, basically what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to throw some tin foil around the edges inside, and then we're going to use this stuff called Durham's Water Putty. This stuff is really great. You just mix it with water, and you can use it to fill up stuff. And I'd rather fill this up anyway and make it a little bit more heavier. Uh, this can right here, I think, is like $10 at Home Depot, so this stuff goes a far, pretty far. So we'll do this first, and then after this dries up, after tonight, we'll come back another day. We'll fill this up. And in this way, hopefully everything will be set up where we can get this rod cut and put into here and make her removable from the... All right, so uh, we're ready to start filling this in with some of the putty. Now, this right here, I filled this in with the aluminum foil, so I packed it in pretty well. And all you need is two cups, one water, one with the uh, powder, and just throw a little water in. You know, it, it's basically like if you're like mixing cement, if you've done anything like that, or if you're baking a cake, you know... You don't want to put too much water in there and make it soupy, but you don't want it dry. So you just, this is kind of the way I do it, because uh, you don't want to waste this stuff. Uh, you can do this like, sort of like uh, soupy, if you really wanted to. And then uh, pretty much uh, pour it into an area and let it dry overnight, and then kind of keep filling it in. So you can use this to sort of fill in like, uh, like say after we're all said and done, and you want this all filled in here. What you could do is you can pack in some tin foil and then you could pour a bunch of this Durham's putty and then sand it down and you can have a flat surface if you wanted to go that route with it. So this is kind of a little bit soupy at the moment which I really wanted to do because I want to kind of pour it in. And you could dremel this stuff back out too like if you kind of filled in this hole too much and you have to kind of make the hole again you can uh, dremel it so that works out fine. So you can kind of just Push this in and let it go. It's basically for your piping in your house. So. Then, uh, so if you want to thicken this back up, you just grab some more of this and throw it in there, like so. And then you get it kind of really tasty. You don't have to put anything else in there, it's just water, it activates with water. And then it's ready to go. So since it's kind of like pasty like that, you can just sort of start spackling it in. So this is going to take a few tries, you know, to kind of just get this hole and everything kind of filled in. And I'm not worried about if there's any of this putty gets kind of up around here, like around there, because you can just wipe it off with your finger and a paper towel. So I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep filling this in, and then uh, hopefully uh, I'll get this pretty much filled in mostly today and then let it dry. It's a good thing to let this dry in the garage too with the heat since we're getting in warmer weather. So this will kind of dry up a little bit faster. The other thing too is I sort of like to do this in sections. If you fill this all in with a very liquidy and watery uh, substance and then you don't let it cure, basically the inside's never really gonna cure. The outside will cure, but the inside won't. So what I like to do is kind of do some of this, maybe let it sit for like, like a couple hours, come back, do some more. Next day, do a couple more and just really get it filled in and stuff. So, but for now, I'm just going to kind of put maybe two cups worth in here just to kind of fill in around the area. Sort of lock in some of this foam. Not foam, sorry, aluminum foil. And kind of just do this. So I'm just going to play with this for a bit, get this kind of going, and then I'll do some more layers. And by the time we're done, we'll come back. And hopefully it'll be like a nice solid hole that I can actually work out the rod with A's. Okay, so over the weekend I did some of the water putty. Uh, what I did is I bun did a bunch of putty around in here. I really let it sit and cure up on Saturday. Sunday morning I woke up. I did a little bit more putty work around the edge and I let that sit. And then what happened was uh, I realized that there was some uh, tin foil rubbing around making noise in there. Plus I wanted a little bit more weight to this. Uh, so what I did is I have this uh, bit on my drill and what I did is I made a bigger hole here and what I did I made this a little bit more of like liquidy not really like running liquid but more of like a, uh, almost like a cake batter like you know how you cake batter you can pour out and it comes out really thick so what I did is I poured a lot in there and I let that dry up for Sunday so I woke up this morning and what I did is I did my little bit more filler here and now it's kind of pretty much curing up but it's still a little bit damp so if you use a drill on it it just comes out like a 
really like dry toothpaste almost. So it's still got a little bit more to go, but the piece is now fairly heavy now, which I like. Uh, that's kind of like what I like on the bases. And what I did is while it was still wet, what I wanted to do was use this bit again and get down toward the bare resin, as you can see in the hole there. So this way, what's gonna happen next is we're gonna cut up the rod for there. And then I'm gonna show you guys what two-part resin is, basically what this item is made out of. Uh, so I was gonna use a Magic Sculpt in here, but I figured it's a good opportunity to show you guys with resin and how basically two chemicals mixed together become a statue like this. So we'll kind of go over that in the next step. But right now we're gonna cut up the rod and then I'm gonna show you why I'm cutting up the rod and what I'll be doing to it. And then uh, once this is cured up, maybe by tomorrow, we could go from there. And this is why I say that this is gonna get a little bit messy because some of this putty is around in these areas, but it's okay, it's gonna get cleaned up and stuff. So let's get this rod cut, and then uh, hopefully by tomorrow, we can start uh, installing her onto the base and then focus on the arms with Matt. Okay, so we're gonna get the metal rod into the bottom of the figure. So uh, just make sure you put the right end in, not the part that we sanded, the part that we sawed off with the notches, so that goes into the bottom of the base. I uh, just got some rubber gloves, some water, and Magic Sculpt. Magic Sculpt is just like uh, Ave's Epoxy Sculpt, except I find that it's very hard to sculpt with this stuff. Uh, it's good for anything that's kind of like an armature or attaching stuff like this or um, anything that needs to be really solid secured. Magic Sculpt cures really, really strong. I feel that it cures almost a little bit stronger than Ave's. But Aves, you can sculpt better with it, whereas Magic Sculpt, I really can't sculpt with it. I think a lot of people out there who do sculpting might find that Magic Sculpt works better for them. It all depends on your preference and what you like. But I use Magic Sculpt for stuff like uh, putting in pegs, setting pegs up into the bottom of the base, using it for magnets and pegs. Uh, like, say, uh, a leg broke on a figure and there's a lot of resin that broke off of it. So what I'll do is I'll use a rod with Magic Sculpt here and there and I build out the skeleton. And then I use Aves over it after it's cured to build out the muscles again. Because I find that Aves sands better than Magic Sculpt. Magic Sculpt just seems like it's so tough that it's not very sand friendly on smaller areas. But on bigger areas it is. So it all depends on what you're used to. So, you know, if you want to uh, find yourself some, you can get at like Complete Sculptor and maybe some other stores. Uh, it's not bad stuff. It's fun to work with. Uh, you might find it better than Aves. It all depends on preference, but it's pretty good that way. So I'm going to mix up a little bit enough to get into here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll probably just be sitting here uh, just making sure it's lined up and even going around, making sure it's not at an angle, and then uh, let it cure up overnight, and then we could go and work on the base uh, tomorrow. Okay, so as you can see, I got the rod in there, and what I was doing is I'm looking at it at like that angle, and I'm kind of just going around making sure it's even. Got to kind of eyeball it. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, as long as it goes in and she's lined up and it's secured and she's not wobbling, that's all that really counts. Uh, but we don't want, you know, this to be at an angle where it's not going in or she's going at like this angle. We want to make sure everything's lined up. So I'm just kind of going over it. I'm turning it, making sure it's kind of... As straight as possible. I mean, there's really no way to measure it because, you know, this stuff isn't completely even. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cure up overnight. But uh, it's what I'll do is I'll come back in an hour just to kind of look at it to make sure that maybe you didn't sort of kind of squeeze back over this angle or kind of went at that angle. <clears throat> so it's just a matter of making sure. Now, there is a little bit of residue around the key stock. Uh, so what will happen is once that's cured... I could just go on there and sort of clean up and uh, go from there and then look at this. We found a little spot that I might have missed here. So got a little piece got to cut out there. I'll fill that in a little bit later. But yeah, so you know, you just got to keep going around the item. So we're going to let this cure up and then we'll come back and then uh, hopefully tomorrow we can get the base pretty much set up and go from there. Okay, so here is the metal rod. We have our marking down. Uh, so the idea with the hollow rod is if you try to saw like this, you can, if it's a brand new saw or if it's a really fine bit, it'll cut through very well. But what I, what I notice what happens is it starts to grab and then you kind of might bend up your item. And if you're really using a smaller piece for like a keying, you don't want to bend this rod at all. So basically what I do is just kind of pull it toward me. You can go really small like this. But then when you get into the hollow part, it starts grabbing. So basically just kind of pull it toward you. 
And then once you get back to the bottom, it goes right off. So it's just real simple. Just got to cut the piece like so. And that's how you do that. So let me get set up and show you. The okay, so what I wanted to do now is just to make sure everything is getting flush. So what happens is when you kind of push this in, it's sort of hitting some of the putty. So there's a little bit of a marker over there where I realized I got to kind of take out a little bit of the putty. So, but I wanted to make sure that this goes in because if this was too long, it would be pushing her up and she would be like that. So we just want to make sure everything is lining up. She fits in the base and goes from there. So... Just to be on the safe side, if you really want to be on the safe side, what you do is you take this off and then you see if it's going flush, it is, and then when you put this back on, you'll know if you're actually hitting something. So I think I'm hitting a little bit of, just when I put it in on the side, so I just got to jumble a little of that out. So before we get into doing the resin, what I like to do is take this piece and crimp the edge. And the reason why we crimp the edge is when we pour in the resin, resin, the liquid resin will flow up to here if you're not careful because there's probably a little bit of a gap of air and then it'll bond to this. And then when you try to pull it out, it's kind of really tight. So we want to crimp this edge to make our lives easier. So it's basically just go into your vice grip, crimp the edge like so. Really tight, try to make sure this way no uh, liquid would get up there. Plus the other thing too is this, when it gets cured into the resin, this will never pull out. So that's kind of a little bit of a tip for you guys because I learned the hard way once. So just to check again, make sure everything is uh, going in okay. Everything's lining up, okay. So I'm just gonna sort of Drum out a little bit over here, nothing much, just around this edge here, so this way we make sure that resin is going around the rod and the rod's not actually touching this. And then uh, once this all cures up tomorrow, we can actually pour in the resin, get her attached to the base, start cleaning all that up, and then work on the magnets. Okay, so it's time to get this attached to the base, and we're going to be using liquid resin, but we'll get that in a second. But the problem is, is if we put this into the base and then we have the liquid resin, that's going to fall downwards. And then what will happen is this will come down too far and we don't want that. We want this to be attached as far up there as possible. So I made a mark here with uh, some marker. That's about as high as the resin we want to go. We don't want the resin to go up any higher when we put it in because what happens is when you put this in, the liquid resin is going to rise upwards because this is going to fill it. But we don't want to rise too far. We'll fill it in later with some A's or something. But for right now, we want to make sure that this stops from moving to get into the base. So just take uh, some hot glue. You know, hot glue is really good because it's just, uh, you can pry it off. It's not gonna keep it there forever. So you just put a little tiny hot glue right over here. Doesn't need to be pretty, but we don't want it to go down too far. And just let that sit. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up in the garage. We'll get some uh, resin mixed up. I'll explain it a bit and then uh, We'll get this into the base. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mix up resin and we're gonna get this metal rod attached. And one of the reasons why I'm doing these extra steps is just to explain a lot of stuff about the hobby, get a lot of people introduced to stuff. So this is kind of a good step to explain what resin is and how it works. Plus, exactly the resin I'll be using now is the same resin that was used to make this statue. I don't know if it was the same number, but it's the same company and everything like that. So down here is Smooth On 300 resin. This is a uh, a, a gallon kit, which is a one gallon A and one gallon B. It's basically two gallons. And what you need to do is you need to mix A and B together in equal amounts. So you have to have yourself either a measuring cups or Dixie cups or whatever you need, it'll work. So since I'm only doing a small amount of resin, these are just like cups I get at the dollar store. So this is A, this is B. I made little black markers down here of how much resin I need, which I don't need that much. <clears throat> so what you do is you shake up your bottles before you actually pour them in there. So I'm gonna pour in A, and then I'm gonna pour in B, and then I pour it into my third cup, mix it up, and then pour it in. Now you may be asking, why don't you just take B or A and pour it in together? The reason why is, if you have A filled here, and you have B filled here, but you pour B into this cup, what happens is you're gonna have a little bit of more residue of B, and then it's gonna be unequal. So it's better to have everything equal into your third cup. Plus, if you're casting a bunch of items in a day, it's better to have three cups so you keep measuring in your A and B's and you keep pouring into your third cup. Uh, one of the other things too is make sure you have rubber gloves, make sure you have a mask on for ventilation. Uh, right now what I do is have my windows open, plus I'll kick on my airbrush booth so any fumes it will go out 
the into the garage and the outside, so we're good to go. Now, one of the last things is dye. Now, this is actually dye from Smooth On. It's specifically made for resin. What you do is you put a little bit of a drop of dye into your bee, you mix it up, and what it is is it helps you see the kit better. Because when you cast up resin, it's pure white, it's bright, it's like just really, and you can't really see all the details. So it's better to put a little bit of dye in there so it becomes a little bit gray. It helps the caster see what's going on and helps you see what's going on as a kit builder. So I'll put a little bit of a drop of dye in there too. We'll mix it up and we'll get it in there. Now the only problem is, is I can't do a speed up video of how resin cures. Uh, it takes like five minutes, but once it's done, it's pretty much ready to go as hard as a rock. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get all this stuff pretty much in my cups and we'll come back. We'll mix it up real quick. We'll pour it in. We'll get the figure in and go from there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to mix up the resin. So we're all set up. I have A here, and then I have B here in equal amounts. I put a little bit of drop of the black dye into this uh, B, so this way everything's ready. So I'm going to mix these two into here, get this mixed up. You mix it for about a good uh, 30 seconds, make sure it's even. And then I'm going to pour it into here. I'm going to get the figure in there. The main thing is I'm focusing on the figure, getting her in there, so this way it doesn't cure it before I get it in. Then once she's all set up and it's ready to go, any extra resin that I have left, I'm going to pour into this mold. So this way, while the video is going fast, uh, video, you'll see how this kind of cures up and it becomes hard as a rock. This is just like an anime head that a friend of mine sculpted for me and I made a mold of it. So this way you'll see like what happens when you pour some resin into a mold and how it pops out. So it's kind of like a good idea to show you what's going on underneath here since this is going to be hidden. So let me get this mixed up and then uh, show you guys how this works out. Okay, so it's been about a half hour, and uh, one of the reasons too is I filled uh, this in with some resin. I also had to mix up some other resin, so I did some other project. Is I like to make clean little molds of these things, so these are kind of like act as filler. So this is kind of like a little bit of a tip for you guys. If you're gonna mix up some resin for anything, have yourself some little containers pour any extra resin because you never know if you'll need this for down the line. Whether you need to build something and use this as filler or sculpt something or a base and you want to use some stuff without wasting material it's always good to keep your extra stuff in a little bin so this is the head just to give you guys an idea it pops out like the mold like so and then there you go Got a little bit of a head that pops out like that so uh, I did pop her out just to make sure everything was flush so you can see that now we have a nice good key system and it locks up pretty well now we have a lot of space here we need to fill in What's going to happen is, as I work on this project and other projects, and I have extra Aves, Epoxy Sculpt, or Magic Sculpt, I'll be filling this in. So I'm not really worried about this right now. Uh, so like when I, next steps is when we start working out the pinning of the head and working out the magnets for the arms, if I have extra Aves, I'll just throw it in here and fill this in. So I don't like to waste materials, and as I build my projects, I figure I'll be use, having extra if I mix extra, and I use it for other stuff. So we're in a good position right now. The body is in there very well. Uh, doesn't really uh, wobble too much, shaking the table, and she's in there pretty sturdy. So right now we have her attached to the base, and she is removable, so I can always work on the figure, paint her up, and put her down. Plus, once we get this filled in at the bottom, we'll be able to do some cleaning and filling in around here, and we should be pretty good. So uh, we're going to pretty much get set up next for doing the magnets on the arms and getting the head attached. So we're going to we'll focus on a lot of that and pinning as well. Okay, so the next steps are we're going to do some pinning and uh, making a key system on the arms. Uh, I'm going to actually attach the head to the body after I set up the keys uh, and the magnets on the arms. It'll just be easier that way without the head being in the way because personally, I like to paint everything up as one shot. I like to have the head here so this way I can paint all the skin and blend everything and then mask everything off and then do the hair. Some people would rather paint the face separately and then actually glue it in at the end, which you could do, it's fine. If that's what you feel more comfortable with, there's no problem with it or whatever you do. It's uh, basically building a kit doesn't really matter unless the end result is what you want. Uh, that's the great thing about this hobby. We're all different, 
We all can do what we want. So there's no correct or wrong way. It's just that certain things I've run into the past where I've had issues where I like to take the extra step. So as far as pinning, all you need is some uh, brass rods, metal rods, whatever you can find. If you don't really want to go out and buy all these brass rods, you can use nails, you can use screws. Uh, just sometimes you have thicker, uh, you know, brass rods maybe laying in the house. Like even a coat hanger, you could cut up a coat hanger and use that as pinning. And the thing with pinning is, say you paint up this body here, right? And then you paint up the head. So at the end, you're going to attach the pieces. So if you just put a dab of glue there and a dab of glue and you put this here, it's going to hold. But over time, maybe you uh, move the statue or you hit it, that little piece of glue is probably going to pop right off. And then you're going to have the piece separated. So what some people do is they'll just drum a hole here and they'll drum a hole there. And then what they do is they cut up a piece of rod and they'll just put some glue there. They'll put some glue there and then they'll attach the head. So this way that glue and the rod is holding it in place. So if you hit it, it's, you know, more secured. Now I've run into the past where sometimes the glue might, you know, come undone or maybe over time it starts wiggling and cracking and that metal doesn't hold the glue as well and they come separated. So what I normally do for my pinning is exactly sort of how we did the base. I'm going to drum a hole in here. I'm going to drum a hole in there. I'll measure out my rod. I'll put some aves here. I'll put some aves here. I'll make sure everything's lining up. And then what I'll do is I'll put some dabs of glue. And then I squeeze the rod and the aves and the glue all together. Make sure it's not seeping out. And I let it sit overnight. And then by the next day, that aves, that metal rod, and the glue makes this thing almost like it was casted together. And then what I'll do is I'll seam up the hair around the edging with some extra aves. But we'll go over that later. Uh, the next step, though, is what we're going to do is magnetize the arms. And I create a magnet system. So just how we did the base here with the hollow brass rod, we're going to do the same thing but a little bit of a smaller scale. We'll use like a brass, uh, a steel rod like this, right? I have some hollow brass rods that are about smaller that will fit this piece. And then we have a lot of magnets here. As you can see, I got my bags of magnets, all different sizes. These are N52 magnets. They're the strongest ones you could get that are, uh, you get from like eBay. You buy a bunch of them, you get them all different sizes. So what we're gonna do is, we'll set up a little key system where this key is gonna sort of get chopped out a little bit. We're gonna have a metal rod in there like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the hollow brass rod piece here with a magnet behind it. So this way, this arm is gonna be able to connect in and out with ease. It's just going to slide right into the hollow brass rod with a magnet and stay in place and pop out. Now, if you don't want to go this route and you don't want to go crazy with creating a rod and a brass rod and stuff, you can clean up this key here. You could clean up this female key here and you can drum a little hole and get yourself a really tiny uh, magnet. Like if you have some really small ones like so, you can actually glue a magnet into here, let it sit. And then what you could do is make sure you have the correct magnet on this side with a little hole and you can set up just a magnet like that or this arm correctly. You could just have a magnet going that way. See, since you have a key already, it's up to you. It's whatever you want to do. Uh, I personally like to have the metal rods because for one, I can actually have this metal rod sitting in another rod on a piece of wood when I paint and it works out easier. If you just have a magnet here and you would have to have it on like some kind of a metal piece like so, to sit there and paint it without it falling all over the place. So it's just kind of like a little bit of a extra step. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to make sure that these pieces go in evenly because right now they don't sort of go in because they're kind of like a little bit of a gunked up resin around there. So I'll probably sand this down a little bit. I'll probably cut out this hole deeper in there. I'm gonna drum out a hole here. We'll do it with the head. And then over here, this one's going to require a little work because you can kind of see it's not really going in too well. It's kind of hitting, so I'm going to have to drum out this hole too because I have to have a big wide open hole here to create the magnet system. So I'm going to go in the garage. I'm going to use my Dremel tool just like I used over there. I'm going to go nice and slow. I'm going to make a big hole here, 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 over there, and over here. And then what we'll do is we'll start getting our bread, uh, steel rods getting everything cut up, we'll get the magnet system going, we'll do that. It, it's a long process because the Aves has to kind of cure for a couple hours, but in the long run, at the end of the project, everything will just be pieced apart, you just piece everything to go, and then you're done and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go get that done, we'll come back, and then we'll start uh, measuring and cutting everything up. Okay, at this point, I dremeled out all the holes, I lined everything up, I put a little black marker here, 
and I put a black marker over here just so I can make sure I know where the arm is lined up. Because I took out the keys, I don't want the keys uh, with my uh, kit. I figured it'd be easier just to do the magnets and the uh, key stock. So just like we did with the base, uh, you cut out your piece, you dremel it out, you also sand off the areas. Make sure you have your hollow brass rod too that's in scale. So this, uh, let's see, this one uh, goes in just like so. So you can see that's how that works. So this we don't need just yet. Right now what I need to do is mix up some A's and I'm going to put some A's into here and then I'll put the metal rods in there and make sure they're kind of like lined up. Make sure they're not going at an angle. Make sure they have to go straight so you got to kind of do the whole eyeballing like we did with here. Now, one of the other things what I did in the garage is you might be wondering why I drummled out all this area back here and all the back of her here. So when this puts together, you won't see any of that. So that's all hidden. I mean, Roberto did an amazing job with all this sculpt and detail, but sadly, when you have the head and hair, you just miss it. Now, the reason why I created uh, notches in here is if you glue this piece together, flat on flat, what's going to happen is if you put too much glue or epoxy, what happens is all the glue starts seeping out around the edge. If you create notches, when you put in the glue, the glue would go into the notches, it would hold it, but it's not going to really seep out depending on how much glue you do. So that's another food for thought, you know, if you guys are building kits. If you have something that's flat on flat, don't be afraid to create some notches or some kind of scraping or crevices or whatever. So this way the glue or epoxy or whatever you use goes in there, goes in there, and it bonds it together better. Uh, just by putting something flat on flat, what's going to happen is the glue seeps or you might actually uh, break it off later on. So this will actually really bond well. So we don't need to worry about the head just yet. We're going to focus on these uh, arms first. So I'm going to mix up some aves. I'm going to get these on. I'm going to let it sit overnight because I'm closing up for the night. And then hopefully by tomorrow, what we can do is we can start uh, cutting up this rod, setting up the whole magnet system. And then once that's done, we install the magnets into the arms and then we can start working on the rest of the thing. Now, you may be wondering why I'm not worried about the hands yet either. I'm going to make sure all this is magnetized and set up first and then I'm gonna attach the hands because if I attach the hands now, trying to put this in and out, I might break the fingers and we don't wanna do that. So it's always easier to do the bulkier stuff and harder stuff first and then add on the finer details. So at the end of the project, What's going to happen is these two arms are going to have the hands on them and they'll be rotted and magnetized to go in and out and make life a lot easier. So let's get these uh, rods in and then hopefully by tomorrow we can start uh, attaching all the magnet parts. Okay, so next step is we need to cut off two brass pieces that are even on here that goes from brass to steel nice and flat. So this way when we put the magnet on there, the magnet is touching the steel. So uh, what I did is make sure that this piece goes on nice and easy. Uh, I made sure that this piece up here is flat. So what I did is if you have a emery board, you could go that route, but that takes forever. And so if you have a spin wheel or something like that, you can just put it on there and you get a nice straight edge and even it out. So what I'm going to have to do is cut this off, but cut it off in the front of the, the line a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll put it on here and see if I need to grind it back down uh, with the wheel or with the emery board. But usually what I normally do is kind of just put it back onto the wheel and grind that down. So I have to do it for this one and this one, get two even ones. And then after that, we'll show you the next step of adding the magnet. Okay, so uh, I was in the garage and I sanded all this down so you could kind of see, hopefully we can get it nice, you can kind of see how it's grinded down and it's nice and flat. So the piece slides like this now. So what you do is if you have N52 magnets, you just pop it on the edge. You make sure that the magnets are touching the steel. But So what happens now is we're going to mix up some uh, Magic Sculpt. And I'm just going to, you need a little bit, just not much at all. Wrap it around this piece here and there. And then let that cure up overnight and then tomorrow we create a magnet system where this kind of connects in and out. And this way, if you ever have to move the arm in and out, the reason why is this metal won't be scraping any resin. It's going to go against metal versus metal so it lasts longer. Uh, but one thing uh, you want to make sure is whenever you find your magnets, make sure you got room. You know, make sure, because if you put in too big of a magnet and then afterwards you try to put this in, all of a sudden you're not hitting anything. So you want to make sure you got room in your kit and plan it all out. Now as far as the magnet size, 
I can't give you a correct size on these magnets because what I normally do is just go on eBay whenever I order some magnets and I need a specific size. I'll order a bunch of different other sizes along with it because you never know when you're building a kit whether you need a large magnet, a small one, a medium one, or it's a really super tiny. So I just have an arsenal of magnets of different sizes. So I just found uh, these that are going to work. I'm doubling them up with two magnets because I have a size that looks like this, but it's way too long and it won't fit into these arms so but this one fits perfectly but i want to make sure we have enough grab with the magnet so i just doubling it up so i'm going to mix up my magiscope i'll wrap it around it and then uh, by tomorrow we can start installing it into the arms okay it's the next day and what i did is i just did some sanding on this areas here and i did a little bit more dremeling in there just to make sure that we have a lot of wiggle room in here so the main thing you want to do is at this point is you can see that this is creating a magnet, okay? So you want to make sure that you don't twist this at all because sometimes if you dremel that at an angle and you turn this piece around and you put the rod back in there, what's going to happen is you're, going to, you're not going to have the magnet touching magnet. So always make sure everything is always lined up correctly. If you have to, take a marker, mark a little bit here, mark a little bit there so you know where that part goes. So the next step is we want to get uh, this attached in here. So this way, when this part is attached in there, this goes like that and connects. So you can even hear it when it sort of snaps. See? So there's a couple ways of doing it. If you're comfortable with putting glue in, like if you have some of this BSI gel glue and you squeeze some glue in there and you squeeze this into here and then you let it sit and then it pops out, you might have a little bit of space between the rod and resin and you could fill it in with Aves. Uh, you can use the two-part epoxy if you want, you could do that, or you can use Magisculpt or Aves. I personally like to use Magisculpt at this process, fresh Magisculpt. Mix it up, it's nice and soft, you push it in there and you squeeze this in here and then uh, it'll give you an idea if there's uh, too much room or not enough room because in the past I made mistakes of putting too much gel glue or epoxy into there and then what happens is when you squeeze this in there all of a sudden all that gel glue and epoxy squeezes out and it connects it and you just it's a nightmare you can't really do it at least with the Magisculpt or Aves you have room forever where if you put too much Aves or Magisculpt there and you squeeze it and then you pop it out and then all this stuff is kind of thing you can actually pull this back out redo it and then get a better idea of how you're going to get it in there. That's personally what I like to do. Sometimes what I like to do is maybe only put a little bit of magic sculpt down at the bottom, just enough so this way when it squeezes in, it only kind of fills up to about right here, like covers that. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll put a drop of gel glue on each side of it, cure it so this way it helps lock it in place. And then I can use some A's later on at night and fill it in and get a nice flat area with a key in there. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, you might not get it at your first chance. I've been doing this for a while where I've made a lot of errors and stuff, but I'm trying to always uh, fine tune it and make things easier. But like I say, um, I personally like to stay away from any of the liquid stuff when you want to squeeze something in there and not have it connect because a little bit extra goes a long way, especially if you got some gel glue or some of uh, the epoxy in there. Uh, you might be able to pop this back out, but then this piece glues to this and then you can't get that separated. So it's something to think about. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to mix up some fresh uh, Magic Sculpt, uh, squeeze it in there with a little bit of water and stuff, and then uh, do this side here. And if this gets nice and even and everything set, then I might do this side. Or I might just do this for a couple hours and later tonight before I close shop, I'll do this one and let that sit. Uh, this is something you want to do while keeping an eye on it. You don't want to do it like before you go to bed, come back the next day and you realize you squeeze too much and everything's bonded together. Or if you uh, you put it in at night and you walked away and you didn't realize it starts sagging this way and then all of a sudden you got a piece that's like connected like that. So you want to make sure you have a couple hours to do. So like say you wake up in the morning, you do that, uh, you know, do some chores, do whatever, come back like 30 minutes later, 40 minutes, check it, make sure things are looking good, an hour, two hours, and then once it's really fairly cured, then you're good to go. So like I said, you got like that three hour window with Magic Sculpt, so it's really bonding and it doesn't work. Um, the other thing too is uh, if you feel that you're worried about any of this uh, getting uh, stuck by any chance, you could just get some baby powder and put some baby powder around there, and then you can squeeze that in so none of the Magic Sculpt or Aves bonds to that. So I'm going to mix this up, we'll get this part done, hopefully it works out, and then uh, like I said later tonight I could do that one.
Okay, so you can see how I put that piece in there and it's got a little bit of extra room around that rod. If you're good enough and you've practiced this and maybe you're planning it out correctly, uh, what you could do is if you have some of this gel glue, you could kind of throw some gel glue around this, like around the two sides, not inside the hollow piece, but around it. Hit it with some Instaset right away. If it, if this going in and out and it's working out fine, this will make your life a little easier. And then you can put this back in here. And hopefully that will help lock it in place and hold it. And then it sort of does. So I'm going to let that piece dry for like a little bit. Let's see. Trying to get in the camera so you can kind of see how it looks. It's messy. It's, it doesn't really need to look pretty because what we'll do is we'll fill it in with some Aves anyway. And then we'll make sure this whole seam is correct. But it's going in and out. It's locked into place. Once this cures, all that magiscope is going to bond pretty well. And this connects in there pretty well. So the arm is uh, looking good. We'll make sure that there's no gaps or anything. If you have to kind of push it a little bit. But like I said, uh, we're probably going to fill it in anyway and kind of clean up some of this area around there. Because what we're going to do is, once this kind of cures up, we'll put some A's around here. And then we'll squeeze this piece onto there so there's no gaps or anything around. Because even before I did this, uh, this arm didn't actually go completely flush to it. There was a little bit of a seam over there you would have had to fill up anyway. So that's kind of what's going to happen. But at least now we have a magnetized piece. So you could maybe see there's a little bit of a seam down in here a little bit now, but that's going to be an easy fix. i just more worried about the magnets than anything. So basically I'm going to do the same thing to this arm, which might be a little bit more trickier only because it kind of can't be completely flush against her chest. It's got to kind of come a little bit out so this way it kind of slides a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing here and then hopefully we'll let this cure up uh, for most of the day. And then maybe by later tonight, I could come in and throw some A's around it and seam it all up. Alright, it's been a few hours. We're pretty much closer to the end of the night. This uh, magic sculpt that's in there pretty much cured up uh, fairly well. So next is I want to fill up these holes and I mixed up some fresh aves and I'm going to start setting up this so this is flush with this arm here so there's no gaps and everything works out pretty well. Now the only problem is with wet aves like this pushing this in there if you squeeze in the out and you pull it what's going to happen is it's going to stick to this piece and we don't want it to stick because then it just becomes a nightmare. So all you really need is baby powder. Um, you can I pretty much get this stuff. I ordered this uh, stuff off of a, a website in bulk because what was happening is uh, a little bit of a tip. If you go to the store and get baby powder, it's got uh, perfume in it. And I was using uh, this stuff a lot with all my sculpting and aves. And the problem was this uh, perfume gets to you. So I got this non-perfume stuff and it works out pretty good. Same stuff you find in the hospital. So that's just a little bit of a tip for you guys if you want to start getting the aves work and use baby powder. So usually I do this over a garbage can, but we'll just do it over here for now. So all I do is I take the baby powder and I just throw it over the area like so. Now that's a lot on there, but basically you just turn it upside down and you make sure there's not a lot of baby powder stuck in the hole because when you go to put this in there, it's going to pack that baby powder down. But all you have to do is take this piece now and you sort of squeeze it back over. And what's going to happen is the aves is going to squeeze around the edge of the arm like so. And if you did it right, and there's not a lot of stickiness, you'll be able to pop this out, and you can see we have a nice flat piece there. Now you just want to be careful though, when you're putting any A's here, that you're not squeezing A's into the hole. And you have to keep an eye on what you're doing. Because if you go too much powder and baby powder, or A's get stuck at the bottom, and over here, what's going to happen is you're not connecting the magnet. And you're just completely pushing the arm further, further, further away. So you always want to make sure that you don't scrape any of that into there. Now for any reason you miss a spot like over here, it's kind of hard to see. There's a little bit of a gap over there that they needed to do. So the problem here is you got to kind of re-wet this area, get that baby powder off of there, and throw on some more aves. Because if you try to put the aves over the baby powder, what happens is it doesn't grab and connect. 
So basically you just want to keep toying with this and going. Like so. Now, the areas that kind of squeeze over the edge, what you can do is you can kind of bring this down and kind of pull it off. You don't have to worry if it gets a little messy. You can always kind of do some fine sanding later once it's cured up. So basically what you do is we go back to this. Like I said, I bought so much of this baby powder that I don't have to worry about wasting it like so. But always keep an eye out inside there. Make sure if you have any old airbrush needles, they're good for kind of getting back in there and scraping some of it out. So if you want... With a dry brush, not wet, you can kind of clean up some of this edging a little bit, like so. Same thing up here, and keep toying with it. Gotta cut some of that out up there, and then it should be pretty good. So, I'm not worried about all that baby powder and dust that's getting around the item now, because what will happen is, if you do any more wet sanding or running under the water after everything's cured up, it comes right off, so you don't have to worry. It's uh, it's not going to hurt your item. So you just got to kind of do both arms and just take off all this excess. If you have a, any kind of scraping tool, if you want, you could kind of just kind of scrape off the edging up here. If you put too much on. Now, if you mix some in with your baby powder and your Aves, you can mix it around. It'll dry up the Aves a little bit, but it's not going to destroy the Aves. The baby powder works out really well. So basically working with the uh, baby powder is just making it dried so it doesn't stick to anything. So I got to kind of play with this for a little bit and keep making sure that we have this sculpt there. There's not like extra A's getting gunked underneath any areas. Kind of hit some more on there and then do that. Now if you're good with uh, putting enough baby powder on there, like you can actually walk away at the end of the night and be able to pop this off in the morning uh but i like to make sure i have about two hours of work time just to keep making sure that i don't connect it because sometimes even though you're doing this you could kind of mess up maybe and the aves kind of goes into a crevice and it kind of locks the piece in so you want to make sure that it's kind of like flat flat so this arm looks looking pretty done what's going to happen is i'm going to let this kind of cure up for about a good uh, half hour come back, throw some more baby powder on and test it. I'm gonna probably pop out one of my old airbrush needles, scrape out in there, make sure everything's good. But I'm gonna do this other arm too, and then uh, hopefully in an hour or so, everything's looking pretty good, and I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the night. Alright, so I went over to pieces. I cleaned up the edging as much as I can. It's going to have to do some sanding once the Aves cures up and really kind of clean up those areas. Because uh, like over here it's pushing in a little bit, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do is just keep making sure that this stuff isn't sticking. And then uh, once it's cured up tomorrow I could just go around it and then it should be uh, ready to go. So I also used one of my old uh, airbrush needles, went in there made sure there was nothing gunked up in the bottom making sure metal is hitting metal and just when you play with it too always remember that when you're putting this in and out while the A's is still soft you're not squeezing any A's into it because you got to keep an eye on that so we're looking pretty good everything's uh, pretty even we're hitting uh, so yeah so I'm just gonna let this kind of set up check it again in another like half hour to an hour and then hopefully by uh, Tomorrow, we're ready to go and get the head of that. Okay, so it's the next day, and I did all my sanding around here. So it's just a matter of using that 3M sandpaper and fine sandpaper, making sure any of the eaves that squeezed over the edge is gone. So you can pretty much see how this looks now. It's a nice little key system. So that connects in there pretty well. The same thing as over here. That connects as well. So uh, basically what I have to do next is just kind of more cleaning and sanding and just fine tuning the item. But right now we're going to kind of close out this video. But we're going to do it by uh, attaching the hands to the arm because I want to get them attached. It's a matter of just dremeling a hole in here and here and also in the hands. And then using some AUs or magic scope with a little dab of glue and a metal rod to hold it in place. And really secure it a little bit better than just gluing it or AUs. Alright, so what I did is I got the holes 
dremeled out and I cut a rod and just to make sure that you know the rod isn't pushing the hand like so so it's like to make sure that it goes into the hole but it's not pushing it down so if you feel that you need to cut a little bit more you can so this one might need to have just a tiny bit shaved off the tip and put that back in there and we're looking pretty good uh, the reason why you put a rod in there is if you just put a dab of glue and you put this piece on there, you can actually just snap that and that glue might pull that off uh, because there's not a lot of meat in here. By putting a little extra aves in here, by putting extra aves in here and then a rod, this is going to be more secure. So if you knock this, you'll actually break a finger. Um, if you feel that you want to make this removable pieces, you could do that too. If you want to just put like a magnet in there and make it removable. But for me, I think just putting the hand as one solid piece like this is going to work out fine. So the idea is we put the aves here, we put the aves here, we squeeze this on and uh, with the rod and it should set. Now the only problem is, is if you're not paying attention over time, the hand could warp a little bit on you because the aves are soft. Uh, so what I like to do is I try not to put too much aves in there, just enough. Uh, and then maybe put like a dab of this BSI glue gel, a little bit there, a little bit there. So this way, it'll glue the hand on and keep it set for the whole entire time. And then once the Aves cures, it's rock solid. That's kind of like the way I like to set up the pinning uh, mechanism. Uh, so that's just the idea to let you know. It's like some people, what they might do is they might just drill a, a perfect hole, glue this in there, and it's perfectly, you know, in there. And then they might drill a hole in there and put some glue in and they attach it like that. You could do that too. That's fine. It all depends on how you like to work and do your build-ups. Personally, I like to just do the A's because I like to have something that's bonded throughout the whole piece. So that's pretty much how I set it up. So let's get these attached and then we'll pretty much have her almost ready to go for uh, working on the head. Okay, we're in a good position. I would say we're probably about maybe 30 to 40% done with this, uh, you know, at least getting it ready for paint. I would say 90% of kit building is prepping, priming, painting, masking, and all that. But we'll get to that later on. You'll see, like, you know, after all this work is said and done, when we go to paint, paint goes by pretty fast. Uh, whereas just, uh, you know, all this prep work is what takes up most of your time. So this makes life easier. I always like to design my kits and study them before I start putting them together just to make my life easier. So by having her removable from the base now with this uh, metal rod is I can put her on a block of wood and I can paint her separate from the base. Cause like say maybe one day I want to paint the base up in some uh, flat black car paint, just get that like a uh, base coat. I could go in a garage and do that. But then I could come back in here and I could like start painting up the figure. And then when everything's done, I could just start attaching the pieces. Now. I like to paint everything in one solid piece. I don't like painting stuff in pieces and then try to put them together at the end. Uh, reason why is, say at your airbrush booth, you have the head, the two arms here, you have the body here, and then say you have some other parts here. Uh, if you're painting up all the pieces and you're if you're good and this is kind of like how you like to work, more power to you, but sometimes I found myself that if I'm painting the head and arms here and then I'm painting the body, sometimes I might put a little bit too much transparency pale flesh here and not enough here and then when you put the pieces together nothing's lining up correctly and the pieces look a little off i like to have everything in one solid piece and then be able to paint it so with this kit it's a little bit easier in a sense that uh, i can paint up her whole body in skin tone once we attach the head and i can paint up the arms in skin tone but say i'm going to start doing some shading in some areas so instead of trying to do some shading here and then do the shading over on this side since it's magnetized, I can attach the arm and I can do some shading on the arms. And then after I feel that things are looking good, I can pop the arms back out. And then I can also do some shading stuff behind the arms. And it's magnetized and you can pop them in and out and it makes life easier. Whereas if these pieces just have a peg and sticking out of like a cardboard uh, a piece of foam or uh, a block of wood, you know, if you need to kind of blend the shading of the skin from here to here, you know, you have to put the piece over there and then it just becomes a nightmare. It's my personal preference and maybe if you guys get into kit building, you might think about that and make your life a little bit easier. So taking the extra step with magnets can make life easier when you do uh, paint work. So next video, what we're gonna focus on is we're gonna focus on attaching the head and doing a little custom work. Uh, 
Now, looking at the whole design of it and studying the pictures and the way it was designed, I want to change up my kit a little bit. I don't want it exactly like the way it's on the box, uh, paint-wise, and I don't want it exactly like the way all the pieces came together. So, that's the good thing about the hobby is you can do whatever you want. If you like the hair, you like the kit, but you want to paint her in a bright orange outfit and you want the hair to be like bright blue, if you want to make her look like a water elemental instead, you can do whatever you want. That's the fun thing about the hobby. So. Real quick, when we come back, we're going to kind of tweak the hair a little bit because there's this like little hair piece over here that sticks out. I'm not really a fan of that. I love the hair sculpt, but I don't like that little piece sticking out. So what I want to do is I'm going to take that out and we're going to kind of re-sculpt over there and kind of blend it down. And then also, a lot of the back of that clear resin pieces too kind of connect into the hair and I'm not really a fan of that. I don't want anything connecting to the hair. I want her kind of separated. Where everything's just around her. I don't want anything kind of connected into her because the way I paint her is going to come together differently and you'll see that down the line. Um, and then uh, what we'll also do is we'll focus on the clear resin too because clear resin is a little tricky. You can't really grind and sand it out. It's more of a uh, sanding it, fine sanding it, and buffing it out to get the clear resin back if there's any errors. But we're going to kind of go over that next. And then after I get through that, I'm going to kind of figure out how I want to do the base because like I said I might want to change up the clear way those uh, lava flows over the edges and we'll see how that works down the line. But this is where we're at so far. Thanks for watching and look forward to the next video where we really do some more custom work and have some fun with the clear resin. Okay, so uh, right now we're going to do some slight custom work. Nothing really major, but some stuff that's actually going to like uh, just sort of change up the kit a little bit to the how I want it on my shelf. Uh, so the way it works is uh, looking at the line at the picture, we have clear resin that sort of comes up around behind her and it connects to the back of the hair. Like there's a piece that connects in here, it connects here, 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 uh, one over here, and I think one more up over here. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to take my Aves uh, Fix-It Sculpt. This stuff is really great for like sculpting hair, uh, maybe muscles, and uh, doing some really good stuff. Because regular Aves Sculpt, the red stuff that I use, it's very soft and it very, it, it kind of sags. Whereas uh, Fix-It, like if you're going to sculpt some hair piece, like if you're going to sculpt like a little whoop, swoop like this, what it, what it does is it really doesn't sag. I mean, it will sag. But it doesn't sag as much as uh, regular, like regular A's would just go like this right away. Whereas this kind of like holds its form a little bit. And then once this uh, fix it really starts to cure up in like that hour to an hour and a half, this really becomes sturdy and you can really kind of start bending it and kind of placing it the way you want. So fix it sculpt's really great for like, I use it mostly for hair. And I'll, I'll use it for maybe any like muscle tones like abs or uh, anything like that or like smaller repairs. Like fix it's really good. So they have fix it and they have fix it sculpt. Now go for the fix it sculpt if you ever want to do anything like that. So that's kind of what we're going to do now. Uh, one of the other things too is, and I understand why this is here. This is a little hair piece, a little swoop piece that comes up on the side of her. So like her powers are powering up and it's coming. Now I personally don't want this piece coming up. I'd rather have her hair kind of flowing over her shoulder for the look I want. So what I did is I did a black marker here. I'm going to chop that off. I'm going to just put some glue, glue this on, and then I'm just going to kind of follow the hair and kind of bring it around and sort of kind of bring it over the shoulder. So that's where we're at with this. So like I said, whenever you get your kit, you do what you want with it and you have fun. With however you vision it, however you want it on your shelf, that's the beauty of the hobby. So this is kind of where we're going with this one. And uh, once... I get through this hump and we start painting, you'll understand what I had in my mind and how I wanted it to be painted. So I'm going to go get this chopped up, I'll come back, I'll use some of this fix it, not a lot, I don't need to mix up much, I'll fill in some of these areas. Once this cures up tonight and then tomorrow, we're going to attach the head and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to seam up and clean up some of these hair parts around here where the clear uh, resin is supposed to connect and then after that, it's just more or less of cleaning up, prepping up, and we're going to start really focusing on the clear resin. And then uh, once that's done, we could probably get closer to painting and worrying about the base. Okay, sort of a quick tip. Before I actually start doing my custom work, how I sculpt is kind of, I guess you could say weird, but I think other sculptors do it too. But working with Aves and doing all my custom projects, I use paintbrushes. So I dip my paintbrushes in safety solvent and I use paintbrushes as a sculpt. Uh, 
I buy various uh, sizes of these paint brushes. Uh, the hobby stores that I go to, they have back to school sales. So whenever they have these back to school sales, these paint brushes are like $1.50 a piece to two bucks. And I try to stock up as much as I can all the time I go. So uh, just gives you guys an idea that I know some people use tools, some people make their own tools, some people rather use like sharp objects and sculpting tools to sculpt. Uh, but for a lot of my customization and rebuilding and repairs, I use paintbrushes. And what happens is over time though, the paintbrushes get sturdy, stiff, and they do go bad. So it's not something that is actually like, you know, you get to use forever. But what I do though, is I save all my old paintbrushes that get gunked up and stuff. So these get really sturdy and like gunky and then I can actually use this to do texture. So if I sculpt the base or if I need to do some kind of texture of rocks, I keep these things and they have like these little sharp bristles pieces now that aren't really bending and you can use that for like creating sand, uh, dust around rocks, uh, you can scrape stuff and so you know you get to utilize some of these old stuff and then what happens is once these become such hard as a rock where the point where they're really messed up I throw them away. So it's a revolving door. I use good fresh brushes when I do something really good. As they get worn down I use them for like some of the uh, messier projects or just kind of like pushing like A's into stuff and then when they get really messed up I throw them in this container and I use them for sculpting and then when they're really bad they go in the trash so it's kind of like a revolving door so it's a little bit of a tip if you guys ever want to use this Aves and you want to start doing stuff think about the paintbrushes with Aves and safety solvent uh, as far as other putties and sculpting I don't really know you'd have to test on your end but it's a little bit of a tip if you ever want to go this route so let's get uh, to customizing this hair a bit Okay, so I pretty much built it up and I'm trying to match the hair as best as I can, you know, match uh, Roberto style. Uh, but since uh, it's kind of like wavy and stuff, so I'm just kind of playing with it, just get this little piece over there. Now what's happening is the uh, A's Fix It sculpt is still very soft because it's freshly made. Normally what I like to do is let this cure up for about an hour. Once it gets a little bit stiffer, I could go in and sort of clean it up. Now, uh, if you see all the residue from the primer mixed with the uh, safety solvent going all over, you don't have to worry about that. It's not the end of the world. It's just making stuff caked up. Normally, it's kind of better to sculpt uh, without having the primer on it, but that's just the way it goes. It's not going to hurt anything, and you don't have to worry about putting the eaves on top of the primer that's on top of the resin because it's going to bond really, really well, especially when you get into all these crevices. Aves really sticks to almost anything you put it on, so uh, it's going to work out fine. So you don't have to worry about it popping off later on down the line. So like I said, I'm going to let this cure up for a little bit longer. Come back to it in about an hour. I'll clean it up. So hopefully by the next time we come back, well, this will be all cured up and cleaned up. And uh, we can start attaching the head to the body. Okay, it's the next day and we're going to attach the head. Uh, this is all cured up pretty well. I just got to do some priming and sanding. But I figure once the head's on here... Uh, I'll put a little bit of silly putty here and here just so no primer goes into these holes and I'll prime up everything together and then also we'll start seaming up and fixing up some of the stuff on the bottom but one of the things with this kit is you have to be careful with this neck if you push it too forward uh, it kind of comes up about the collarbone area and then if you push it back too far you get a huge gap so you want to make sure when you put this one on you line it up correctly. Even if the hair is not touching her back, it's more or less focusing on the neck and making sure that, that collarbone area is in there correctly. So that's what you got to be careful of. Now, like I said, if you push it too far, that little arrow comes out way too far. So you got to kind of have it in a little. So there's going to be sort of a gap uh, with the hair back there. That's okay because I'm actually going to fill that in with some A's after this is cured. So what I did is I got my... Uh, brass rod cut. I'm going to put it into this end first. But for right now, what I want to make sure though, 
is I put enough magic sculpt into these areas. So I'm going to put magic sculpt here and here. I'm going to squeeze it down, make sure it's looking good. And then what I'll probably do is maybe throw a little extra around here, make sure that's set. And then once I get enough feel for how much magic sculpt needs to be in here, I could throw a lot of glue here and a lot of glue there, and I can squeeze this on and make sure it's lined up. And then I got to make sure it's lined up fast because if I'm not careful, that glue could sort of set on me and set the wrong way. So it's just one of those things you got to be mindful. So always test your items before you start attaching just to make sure you know how it's got to go in. Okay, so it's the next day and I had some of this fresh A's mixed up working on another product. So I went right ahead and I just started doing all the seams around the hair and the body. So there was a gap between these two because the way we had to position the head made the hair kind of fall off the body. And I didn't want that gap there because it's also easier to paint by having a trim and all that. But we'll go over that later. So uh, what I was doing right now is just going over with the A's and building in around the gap. Doing my own little sculpt work at the bottom of the hair. Just kind of like uh, doing my own little take on it. Uh, as you can see going around. There's a spot over here I need to do right now, uh, but I just figured let me uh, go over this real quick while I finish this stuff up. Uh, I'm also going to use the A's and off camera just do some fine tuning around here because there's a little gap here between the glue and the uh, hand and stuff. So I'm going to clean these up as well. And then after that I just have the primer up and fine tune again. So that's pretty much where I'm at with this piece. I figure uh, what we're going to do is we'll end the video here because uh, it was mostly about pinning and magnets. Uh, and then what we're going to do is, next video we'll focus on the clear resin and maybe what we're going to do on the sides of the base. And then after that, it's just a matter of tedious work of fine tuning and cleaning, fine tuning and cleaning, and getting ready for paint. So we're moving along pretty fast. Uh, we got a lot of the hard stuff done, so now it's just uh, prepping everything else for paint. 